Hello and welcome to this Let's Build video where we will take a look at how to build a design object in Thrive Architect for WordPress from scratch. So this here is Thrive Architect on a WordPress landing page. And over here, I have the example of the object we're going to build. So as you can see, this is like an ebook cover. But the cool thing is this is not an image. So this is not something you have to construct in Photoshop and then upload. This is an object that is built in Thrive Architect. That means it will be much smaller in terms of file size, so faster loading, which is good. But also you can edit this. You can just click on this and edit it. And I wanna show you how to build such a thing. So let's just get started right away. I will drop, I will basically replicate this on the left side right here. What we already have, I've dropped the content box here and what we already have is in the columns, you see that on the column option, I've chosen vertical center alignment. So everything in here will be vertically center aligned. That's why the box is in the middle. And okay, next thing, well, let's first make it a bit more visible. So let's go to the background and make this box white. And then we will reduce the opacity to something like this. Next up, it's definitely too wide. So we want to go into layout and position and change that width. Not sure how wide we're gonna make it. And then center align it horizontally as well. So that is kind of the frame around our little book. And then I'm going to drop another content box in here. So the content box inside the content box like this. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna apply a background to our inner content box so we can differentiate them more easily. This is a gradient and I have saved this gradient. So in Thrive Architect, you can save and load gradients. So I'll just apply this saved gradient right here. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this top and bottom margin. So I've removed the spacing around the inside box. And the reason for this is the outside in editing principle. So I'm going to select the outer box right here and I'm going to apply padding on this box. So, and this makes it easier for me to adjust later. And, you know, I think around 30 might be what I want here. And then I'll simply remove. So I, I linked them all up, made them all 30 and then unlink them and remove the bottom one. This gives us this layout, which is a, a better way to do it is to do outside in instead of going to the inner element and adding margins it's better it's almost always better to apply changes to the outer element and we'll see more examples of that in a moment all right next let's start putting stuff in here uh, specifically let's start with the text so i'm using plain text here i'll drop some plain text in here plain text is the type of text you want to use for decorative text so Headings and paragraphs are for writing content, but if text is decorative and you don't want it to have, uh, you know, paragraph spacing and inherit styles and so on, then plain text is the one to use. Now I'm going to write get set to sweat and I make the line breaks manually here, which also you would never do when you're actually writing text, but because it's kind of decorative, the text is an object here, a design object, we can do that. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to select this plain text. I'm going to duplicate it because we have a second line of text, which is your key to fun fitness. And I'm going to drop in the dividers that we have. So before and after this heading, we have these divider elements. Now we know that this is white and one pixel. And here's a, an interesting tip design wise. As you can see, this line here, this white line looks like it's thicker than this white line, but it's one pixel. When you see that, when you see something that looks like it's thinner than one pixel, what it usually is is one pixel and then reduced opacity. So as you reduce the opacity, that the line becomes finer visually. So that's what we're doing here. And I'm going to reduce the amount of space around this uh, divider as well like this, and then let's duplicate it, the duplicate below this text. So now we have the elements, the basic elements, but of course the styling is completely wrong. So once again, what I'm going to do is instead of styling individual elements and adding, you know, spaces to the left and right of dividers and selecting this text and styling it and so on, 
I'm going to select the content box that all of this stuff is inside. This is outside in editing and I'm going to apply my rules here. So typography, I want my text to be center aligned. I want my text to be white. That's true for all text in this box, right? And I want some space. Oh, no, let's stick with the text. We have a font which is called railway, which we're going to apply here. Um, and we have a light version of this, I think something like this. So, and you see that applies to all of the text inside this box, right? So I only have to make the change once. The same is true for the spacing. I'm going to choose the layout and position and I'm going to add spacing. I'm going to add padding. So that's inside spacing to the entire thing. Uh, maybe even more than that, let's say 24. So see how much faster this is than if I have to go and add spacing to individual elements. In fact, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this top padding here so that it, we have more even spacing all around. Then we go and make the individual changes that are actually individual changes. So here we have the font size. Here we want this text to be larger by quite a bit. Um, and then of course the line height is much too high. So let's reduce that again. And also one word is bold. So we just select and control B. Then this text here, this line of text here is smaller a bit. So let's go like this. And also let's create this space here. So I will go to layout and position on this text element and just add a top margin like this. And I will also select the containing box here and add negative margin to the bottom so that we have this overlap effect. Now we can see that the whole thing is much too wide. And so we can fix that by selecting the outer box here and just adjusting the width. Something like this is more fitting. Now we have a few more elements to make this look more ebook like. And one of them is rounded corners. So let's go here and let's first apply relatively large rounding to all corners and then select the left corners and reduce that. Let's do like five, maybe top left and bottom left. This makes it look a little bit like a notebook or something like that, right? And then finally, we have a border on the left side. So this is simply a border, this dark blue. And we'll make it thick enough. Again, this just makes it look a little bit like a notebook. And we have one final effect here, which is the shadow effect. So again, I'm, I have selected the containing box here. And I go to shadow and do a drop shadow. And here, an effect we're going to apply is we're going to use spread. By default, the shadow, the size of the shadow is basically the same as the size of the object. And we can increase the spread to make the shadow larger and we can decrease it to make it smaller. And then we can in increase the distance here. And we'll also increase the blur a bit. And that gives a different kind of offset effect, which is the effect I'm going for right now. All right, and that's how we build this ebook type graphic in Thrive Architect from scratch and also in just a few minutes. Now, this is really useful to use. What you can do is you can either select this container here with the background effect or just the ebook itself, and you can save that as a template. And this is how I would encourage you to use this because it's super useful to have this as a template that you can just drop in onto your landing page, you can drop it into your opt-in form, you can drop it on the download page, and that gives that consistency, that scent, right, where someone signs up, they see, okay, this is the ebook I'm signing up for, the next page, you know, here, download your, or confirm your email to get it, next page here, download this thing, and they always have this visual consistency. What's also great about it is that it is very easily editable, right? Once you have this, if you have more than one ebook, or you wanna test different ebook titles, you can just change the text, right? That's way faster than if you have to go into Photoshop, open a file, do the edit, save the file, upload the file and so on, right? So this is a lot more convenient to work with than an image file. All right, thank you for watching this Let's Build video. In these videos, I wanna show you how to build stuff from scratch in Thrive Architect. And let us know if you enjoy this type of video and also if you have ideas or suggestions for what you want to see built live from scratch in such a video. Leave a comment and let us know.